بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين After Allah عز وجل shook the hearts of the disbelievers with the fact that the day of judgment is something that will undoubtedly take place Allah عز وجل moves on to further threaten and terrify those who belie the messengers and those who reject the message and those who persist on disobeying him by describing the punishment awaiting such people. Allah says, Inna jahannama kanat mirsada. Indeed, hell has been lying in wait. Sheikh Al Uthaymeen Ali said, Jahannam is lying in wait, meaning it is waiting for those who disbelieved or disobeyed to be thrown in it for the promised punishment. Rightfully so, because they denied or transgressed. Al-Qushayri said that this verse means that Jahannam is waiting for people to pass over it. You know, Jahannam has a sirat on top of it that is as fine as a hair and as sharp as a sword as described by the Prophet And Allah Azza wa Jal said, as in Surah Maryam, وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Each one of you will pass over it. And people will pass over it according to their deeds. Some people will pass over it as fast as, fast as lightning. Some will pass over it on the Sirat as fast as the wind and some as a horse rider, and some will be walking, and some will be crawling, and some will fall in it. We ask Allah's protection. لِلْطَاغِينَ مَآبَ For the transgressors, a place of return. It's the final abode for those who rejected, for those who denied, and it is also an abode for those who transgressed and disobeyed. It will be an abode for those who disobeyed Allah and sinned. Allah Azza wa Jal couples tangible with non-tangible punishments. Jahannam is not just going to burn the flesh and the bodies of those who disbelieved or disobeyed, but it will also burn their pride and arrogance. It will be a place of humbleness and humility for such people. <laughs> In which they will remain for ages unending. However, Unending is only related to the disbelievers. Believers who sinned and whose good deeds were not enough to overweigh on the scale, the precise scale that doesn't leave anything out. If their good deeds doesn't, doesn't over or don't overweigh their bad deeds then they will have to be cleansed from their sins by being punished in hell but eventually after the purification of their sins Allah Azza wa Jal with his mercy will take him out and admit them into Jannah but the point that many people forget is that there will be punishment for sinning. 
Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَمَا أَصْبَرَهُمْ عَلَى النَّارِ What makes them believe or think that they can tolerate the fire of hell? Regardless of how short the period is in Jahannam, brothers, its torture is severe. Its punishment is painful. And we cannot tolerate it. Our bodies cannot handle it. So we have to strive not to be amongst those who will be punished in the fire of hell. لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا. They will not taste or in any coolness or drink. Any coolness, Sheikh Al Uthaymin said. Allah Azza wa Jal negated that they will feel any coolness for their bodies from outside, as well as any coolness from inside or drink. They will have nothing to decrease their suffering from the outside nor from the inside. إِلَّا حَمِيمًا وَغَسَّاقًا Except scalding water and profane cold fluid. Rabbi ibn al-Anas said about the word حَمِيمًا Scalding water, he said, it is the hottest temperature that water can ever reach. Wagasaka Ibn Kathir said, this profane fluid is a compilation of the pus of the people of hell, in addition to their sweat their tears, and the discharge of their wounds. This is going to be their drink. When they ask for something to drink, they will be provided with that. Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen said it's going to be a very stinky smelling, intensely cold drink. They will be provided. So Allah Azza wa Jal will punish them with something that is intensely hot as well as something that is intensely cold. Why? So they will taste. Punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. Jaza'an wifaqa. An appropriate recompense. It's in proportion and comparable to their deeds and behavior in this life. Allah Azza wa Jal is just. Allah says, Inna Allah la yadlimu mithqala dharra. Allah does not wrong people as little and minute as an a weight of an ant or an atom's weight. It's a just scale. And he is a just judge. And we will get the recompense in accordance to how we perform here. The chance is ours. There are people who lost this chance by dying. But we still have this chance, brothers and sisters. We still have the chance to rectify. We still have the chance to rescue ourselves from all of this punishment. If we only remember before we sin or think about sinning, that Allah is all hearing, all seeing, all knowing, and that everything is recorded, and that we will be held accountable 
for every move? Trust me, brothers, if we remind ourselves with this, we will really think very hard before we go ahead and sin. But it's our deadly state of heedlessness that often makes us or makes us forget <sighs> indeed they were not expecting an account see the disbelievers disbelieved so they did not expect to be held to account and this unfortunately with deep sorrow and regret I say applies to many Muslims not the fact of disbelief but the fact that they don't expect to be held accountable a lot of Muslims act as if they will not be held to account they act as if after death there is nothing you see you see them sinning in a manner that does not reflect that they believe that they will be resurrected after they die and they do not believe or at least act as if they don't believe that they will be held to account by the Lord of the heavens and the earth. And denied our verses or signs with emphatic denial. See, this is a, a second reason they were deserving of punishment. Their belying of the messengers, their rejection to the message, despite very obvious and clear signs and miracles, is another, yet another reason why they uh, are deserving of the punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا But all things we have enumerated in writing. All actions, all deeds are recorded and preserved. No alteration, no addition, no deletion, nothing. The task of the angels who record our deeds is to simply record what they see and hear, what we do and say. See, from the mercy of Allah Azza wa is that He does not punish us for things that we think about and go through the mind. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has pardoned my ummah from things they have thought of so long as they don't talk about it or act upon it. Wallahi, if this was not the case, we would be ruined. Because in addition to our sins, the evil thoughts we think about is enough to throw us in hell. But it's the mercy of Allah. See, Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't want to punish, to punish us. Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِن شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What will Allah do with punishing you if you are grateful and you believe? What does Allah want from us? He tells us in the Quran, Wallahu yuridu ayyatuba alaykum. Allah wants to pardon you, wants you to repent, and He will accept your repentance. So, what's the delay? Why, why do we find it so difficult to make that step towards Allah when Allah is receiving? Allah is receiving. Allah rejoices when we repent. فَذُوقُوا فَلَنَّ زِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا So taste the penalty 
and never will we increase you except in torment. Ibn Umar said, there is nothing more difficult for the people of hell Then this announcement, you know what this announcement implies? <laughs> Scholars of Tafsir said that punishment will not remain at one level at all, and it will not remain at one type ever. It will differ in the form, shape, severity. Do you remember the verses we just explained? The description of the punishment? How harsh and aggressive it is? This terrifying description is only for the first time when they're thrown. But things will get, will get worse as it goes. If this was the severity of the punishment, at the moment when they enter the fire of hell, how will it be after a month? How will it be after a year? How will it be after 10 years? And Allah says, Ahqaba, years after years. How will it be? Can we tolerate that? Isn't this worth act, acting? to protect ourselves from and against. <laughs> then Allah Azza wa Jal moves on to give the description or some description of some of the rewards awaiting those who obey, believe, adhere, submit, and fulfill servitude to Allah. And as Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen Rahmatullah said, this is the style of the Qur'an. This is the way Allah Azza wa Jal uh, does in the Qur'an. He scares you and then gives you hope between the two Things are balanced between fear and hope. Things are balanced because if you are too scared, you despair and you lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And if you feel too hopeful, then you will not be scared from punishment. And both of these are grave sins to have in the heart or the mind of the believer. To have so much hope that you're not scared anymore or to have so much fear that you give up hope. These are both major grave sins in Islam. Allah says, mafaza. Indeed, for the righteous is success and attainment. We ask Allah mercy and to make us amongst those who are successful and get this attainment. Allah says, Inna lil muttaqeen. Allah didn't say, Inna lil mu'mineen to the believers. Because the description or the quality of piety, taqwa, is more special than believing. Many people claim belief, but piety, taqwa, is a judge. See, this type or this category of people, al muttaqin are those who strive hard to protect themselves from the aforementioned punishment, 
and to become deserving to the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal with which they will be admitted into Jannah. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about muttaqin, not mu'mineen. Security when people are scared. Joy when people are terrified. Coolness when people are hot. Are all attainments. But there are more details which we will address in the following session and we will conclude with this. And we will give the remaining details of the attainment for the people of Jannah in the following session, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha